finish up our week uh, talking about uh, cybersecurity, we're going to talk about a few things related to safe browsing as well as email. So the first one, which I mentioned earlier in the week, is don't browse it as an administrator. So what that means is your actual account logged into your personal computer uh, shouldn't be set up as an admin if you are browsing. And the reason behind this is that as an admin, we have rights to install programs, which is good. Fine. That's this is something we need. However, when we're using our computer day to day, uh, we really don't need that ability. So as an administrator, it can be troublesome when you're browsing. It's going to allow malicious software to be installed in your computer. So what you do is set up an account that's not an admin, use that in your day to day stuff. When you want to install a program, you can switch your user and log in as your administrator account. Avoid clicking pop up windows. If you get into a situation where you go to a website and it causes a pop up. On that pop up, there are typically a lot of ways to get rid of it. And so automatically people think you're going to close that pop up. So they'll put things like fake close buttons or click here to close this window uh, or click here to not get this pop up. These types of things tricking you into clicking the link on that pop up. And that's a really good way to get adware, spyware, these types of things on your computer. So be sure on pop ups to use the application close button found in the top right hand corner. Or again, if all else fails and sometimes they even gray that out, we can just force the program closed by our control alt delete and going into our task menu. Uh, so this kind of leads into the next point, which is be on the lookout for those fake buttons, right? Fake download buttons on certain sites. When we're on those types of sites though, with, that have these fake buttons along with ones that actually download what we're looking for, uh, chances are, I mean, you're in, you're in kind of a shady place already, but just be aware of the fake buttons. Okay. Really read those websites uh, clearly. And if ever in doubt, uh, I would say close the web page. Uh, wait for the page to load completely before you start clicking around. So a lot of the time, what can happen is on a site, you're either, you know, you're waiting for it to load to read an article or whatever it is, those social media news ones that force you to click that little next button and all this type of thing where we're reading this information. Uh, wait for it to load because sometimes you inadvertently will click on one of those ads or one of those links on the side without knowing it because the page isn't completely loaded yet. So be patient, wait for the page to load if you're going to be reading those types of things or browsing those types of sites. Look for HTTPS when entering personal data. We talked about this in the previous video. Uh, it's just, it's too easy for someone to capture your information over standard HTTP uh, protocol. So if you're entering personal information, please look for that HTTPS. If it's not there, don't enter any type of personal information. Avoid the special media players. Now, I put this as a separate point just because it does come up a lot. Um, I usually fix these types of problems for my friends and family and this type of thing. So if you ever, you know, you're streaming hockey or, you know, all my friends like to stream hockey or football or whatever it is, and they'll go to these, you know, streaming sites that aren't, you know, reputable. And what happens is you click on a certain stream and then it asks you or it tells you that you have to install a certain media player. That media player is in fact really not needed to stream that video. I, I would simply leave that web page. It's typically a way to get that software onto your computer, very annoying and troublesome to remove, installs in a bunch of locations under a bunch of different names. So stay away from special media players. If you need to stream video or you're downloading and want to play a video, use VLC. I've got a video explaining how to download and install VLC. It's safe, very reliable and can play just about anything. And then of course, the last footnote here is download at your own risk. If you're online, you're on the internet downloading who knows what, you're really opening up the door for potential problems. So just keep that in mind if you are out there downloading uh, different things. Okay, let's move on to email. So you're going to get email, whether you like it or not, you're going to eventually get some junk email. Okay. And this gets into a few different factors. One is if you have a very standardized email account. If your email account is very generic, people might end up just trying it uh, to see if emails get through. So if you do add numbers onto the end of your emails, your main mailbox, this is a way around this, something to consider. Uh, but if you do end up getting email into your inbox in the rare event that says you've won something, right? You're, you're, you're next in line, free iPhones, free this, free that. It's, it's not, okay? So those emails, please don't even bother opening them. Those need to go directly into junk. You need to flag them as junk and get them out of your inbox. So be aware of that. Don't open those emails. Look at the attachment before you download it. So what I mean by that is when you look at an attachment, see what type of file extension it is. 
So for example, a .exe file, I'm gonna stay away from entirely. Um, if it's a .zip, that is also something that I would need to look into a little bit further. And the main thing would be, of course, who am I getting this attachment from, okay? So even something as innocent as a Word document can have malicious code. So if someone I don't know sends me a very random Word document that I'm not expecting, I'm not gonna open that, okay? Simply because I go, oh, what is this? We might as well just check it out. Well, that can really open the door for a lot of problems. So uh, keep that in mind. Always be aware of the type of attachment that you have and of course, who it is coming from. Read the email slowly, okay? Even if you have a doubt, because if I start reading through these emails slowly and I'm really absorbing that information, chances are you can use your common sense and figure out if you're supposed to be getting this email or not, or if someone is trying to attach some malicious code to your computer or, or hack your system in some way. Don't click links in emails. Now, what I'm, I'm not saying don't ever click a link in email. What I am saying is figure out who it's coming from. So let's do that first. Let's see the content of the email. What are they actually trying to say to me? And then based on that, we can determine if we're gonna click that link or not. So for example, if I get a fairly random, let's say note from my bank saying that I have an overdraft, my account's being compromised, I simply click this link to resolve the problem, I'm definitely not gonna do that. I'm gonna pick up the phone and call my bank, right? That, that, that would be something I wouldn't click. I wouldn't expect that to come into my inbox from my bank. So we need to use our common sense with these emails and then I can determine if I'm gonna download the attachment or click the uh, link in the email. So that brings us to the end of the week and the end of this lesson. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new about cybersecurity and the next time you're out browsing the web and reading your email, you can protect yourself just a little bit better.